Yeah, it's beautiful. So now, now we touched a little bit of this sexuality. So let's let's start from here. Uh, what is the more, if you could describe more in the details, uh, the tantric viewpoint on sexuality? Now we know in the nature. So what about the human beings? You know, what is the difference between the tantric sexuality and let's say the ordinary sexuality, what people are practicing right now? In the ordinary sexuality, people get touched by this wing of desire when uh, sincerely and beautifully, a man and a woman are attracted to each other. And it's a healthy attraction. It's like, you know, two beautiful human beings are attracted to each other and everything is okay. You can see that in that man and woman, there appears an energy, this energy of desire, of attraction, they are shining, they are glowing. They, you know, this, this attraction makes them be very much alive. And uh, there is something really beautiful. Even ordinary human beings, when they are truly in love and when this attraction is clean, because there can be situations where a man or a woman is very neurotic and is very, um, in this way, a little bit psychotic about it. And then this sexual attraction can take some wrong pathways. And then that man and that woman, they manifest unnaturally. They have a sexual tension, which leads to tension and pain and other things. But these are pathological cases. It's true now on planet Earth, there is a lot of this, but still it's unnatural. If we look at animals, when all the, all the animals, all the way up till the human being, the animals, when they are, uh, in this situation of sexual attraction, they are natural, they are healthy. Their sexuality has something natural and healthy. For the human beings, when their sexuality is natural and healthy, we can see a certain beauty that the, the man and the woman are like the flower on a tree. The flowers are beautiful. Sex is beautiful. The attraction and the desire when it's healthy and natural, it is beautiful. But um, so in this way, we can say that sexuality is illustrating a sort of a maximum blossoming of the energy. We can say that the man and the woman, when they are full of this energy, they are a little bit like gods. They are shining, they are glowing, they are alive. And in the history of the world, we see that this love is leading to beautiful creativity, to phenomena of self-sacrifice and abnegation, where people are capable of great uh, sacrifice and surpassing their own limitations and things like that. So actually in sexuality, there is a huge sleeping potential. It is what the, the tantric yoga calls the energy of kundalini. Like when a man and a woman are full of this passion, there is a little bit of this kundalini moving around in them. And this kundalini moving around in them makes them transcend the limits. It makes them be 25% better than they are in normal circumstances. Like they are really on fire. And uh, therefore, sexuality has a very important place in Tantra because it's a huge energy which is potentially sleeping in us. And therefore, even for ordinary people, when it's not neurotic and pathological, it brings something very beautiful up in us. In Tantra, the difference is that knowing this, I can look at myself and transform this sexual desire and this sexual pleasure in a conscious instrument. Like I am, I am aware that when I am in love and when I have this sexual energy, um, it's like I receive a gift from the gods. It's like for three days, I've got a magic weapon. I've got a magic power. No? And then the tantrics want to stay with this power and to use it to stay with it. So the question is how to keep the attraction alive, how to keep the sex going. Normal men and women, the 
sexual attraction leads to the sexual union. And the sexual union, as it is average today in Europe or America, is somewhere between five to 10 minutes. So when finally men and women reach to the climax of their union and they finally take off their clothes and they make love, that lovemaking is a moment of beauty of five minutes. And then it's gone. And therefore the tantrics have said, what if we can make this time of union one hour, not just five minutes. What if we can make it two hours? What we, if we can extend it indefinitely? So the man and the woman who are into it, they stay in that glow. They stay in that fire. They stay in that desire. They stay into that magic moment. So that's the difference. The difference is that the tantrics know that through sex, they are receiving a wonderful gift and they want to keep that gift lasting for as long as possible. When it lasts for so long, then automatically the human being starts being transformed. If you stay in a position of the body for three minutes, the effects are this much. If you stay in the same position of the body for 10 minutes, the effects are getting stronger. If you stay for one hour, the effects are really, really deep. In the same way, the sexual union is just the beginning of something. The man and the woman are looking in each other's eyes and they are trying to tell to each other in a verbal and in a non-verbal way, they are trying to tell to each other the great mystery of love, the great mystery of enlightenment. And uh, in five minutes, you will not manage to do that. And therefore, they discover that if you stay in that state for one hour, for two hours, then there are changes in the brain. It's exactly like you are under the influence of powerful medicine. And then you transform. And thus the men and the women who know how to prolong this sexual passion, this sexual joy, they become transformed. Technically, we call this the sublimation of energy, that the energy is being sublimed and the energy is being raised and transformed into something higher.